There's a flavor profile stuck in my head of Cubans from the late 80s and early 90s that will never go away. Give us like one minute, who's Pete Johnson and who's Tatuaje? Okay, so in uh, 1989, I moved from Gardner, Maine to Los Angeles to become a, a rock star. I was a musician, bass guitar, uh, hard rock, and uh, started playing shows around the Sunset Strip, did the whole thing, the whiskey, the Roxy, the famous clubs, nice. the Viper Room. Never really made it anywhere. Um, Actually made it almost, and then we broke up and I needed a job. I was going to cigar stores to get cigars to smoke because I thought it was a cool thing. I think my first premium cigar was $2 and uh, I was afraid, actually it might have been two fifty, and I was afraid to tell my girlfriend at the time that I spent so much on a cigar. <laughs> I sat down in the backyard and just smoked for like an hour. I was like, wow, this is like really relaxing. Maybe I should smoke some more. And I would go and save up money and I'd go to cigar stores and around town in, in Studio City, California, where I lived at the time. I'd visit a few stores there. And one day I told my girlfriend, I said, you know, I think I'm gonna ask them how much it costs to open up a cigar store. And uh, they told me the price and I was like, I can't, I don't have any money. <laughs> like, how I, am I spent my 220 on the last cigar. <laughs> <laughs> how am I supposed to afford, you know, whatever, the $100,000 they told me it was gonna cost to open up a cigar store. Well, fast forward, I uh, was sitting at another job I had. I was actually, uh, for lack of better words, uh, well, short story, I was a, a, a bouncer in a strip club. I'm not a big guy, Yeah. Well, but I w there was a lot of big guys around me. I was like the guy that would make sure that the bouncers were doing their job. <laughs> so you're the bouncer branch manager? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. One of the guys from the cigar stores I would visit came over to the, the, the club one day and said, hey, you want a part-time job? And I said, yeah. I go, doing what? He goes, Sundays, you'll have to mix pipe tobacco and uh, help me in the humidor. I go, okay. Well, Sundays within six months turn into a full-time job. And uh, that was right in the beginning of like the boom. Mm -hmm. That was 93. And I figured out that uh, the cigar industry was a way better industry than the music industry and I never left. And one day, um, an old friend in the industry brought me an idea. He said, do you want to make a cigar still? I go, yeah, since the mid 90s, I've been trying to find someone that can make me a good cigar that I can put my name on. He goes, well, I got this guy that just came in from Cuba and uh, he might be able to do it for you. I said, well, send me some samples. And I didn't like the samples and uh, they said, don't worry, we're gonna come and visit you. They rolled me three more cigars and I didn't like any of them. And then I had a conversation with this guy that no one knew about, who everybody called Pepin. And I <laughs> was like, okay, my name's Pete. I don't speak <laughs> Spanish and you don't speak English, but we, we can speak tobacco. And uh, I picked his brain for a few minutes and he rolled me a cigar after that that I thought was, okay, that's what I'm gonna put my name on. I went home. And I said, I'm gonna make a cigar. And everybody's like, are you crazy? And I said, if I can't sell one of these, I know I can smoke every one of them. <laughs> so did it start as Tatuaje? What, what was the yeah, first? Yeah, it started as Tatuaje. Okay. Tatuaje, uh, uh, Miami Brown label, the Selection de Cazador was the first Tatuaje. Um, there were six sizes. I have a theme to pretty much every cigar I do. March 9th of, um, was it 2000? Three, uh, my dog Hunter, which in Spanish is Cazador, ah. passed away. And uh, I was like, I'm gonna call it the selection of Hunter. And everybody tried to correct me. They're like, it's supposed to be selection del Cazador, the selection of the Hunter. I go, no, it's Hunter selection. <laughs> They're like, well, who's Hunter's Hunter? I go, my dog. Not what he does. <laughs> so every, every letter, if you look at the, the Havana Cazadori and the Unico and the Noea and the Taino, and the Especiale and the Regio, they spell out Hunter. No, so it, it all started from that passion and it's always been that theme. Uh, every time a dog has passed, I've had four Rottweilers in my life and every time one's passed, I've always come up with a cigar 
uh, to remember him by. You, you have so many unique names within that. That's, I'm glad we're hearing that because being new to the industry, I'll look at some of these names and going, yeah, I, I don't know what that means. So it's hard for me because if I don't know what it means, real high probability our customers don't. A lot of my brand names are actually old Cuban brand names. What we would call a Chinchali brand. Back in Cuba, there were a lot of small factories. Of course, there were big factories, but back when before Castro, there were a lot of small factories. And um, a lot of those brands kind of disappeared, but they used to sit on the shelves next to the Monte Cristos and the H. Upmans and the sure. Partagas and uh, all these other brands. And I was like, why is nobody using these brand names? So they're, they're beautiful, like La Riqueza means the wealth. El Triunfador means the triumphant. I mean, who wouldn't want those brand names? So sure. I was lucky enough to be able to find those brand names, but also find the old artwork for them. Oh, cool. So I resurrected them as pieces of history. Um, and luckily, bands uh, Cigar Rings down in the Dominican Republic, Albert has probably one of the largest Chinchali collections of old artwork. Right. And uh, he has all these pieces of, of those brand history. I actually found a, an original box from like the 30s of one of my one of my cigars. No kidding. Yeah, so I, I was like, okay, I own the trademark now, but uh, it'd be kind of cool to have a, an original box from Cuba. That's very cool. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your, just your core product, Nicaraguan manufacturer, factories. Uh, okay, so three factories, um, all owned by the Garcia family. Uh, two in Esteli, Nicaragua. Mm -hmm and one in Miami, Florida. The Miami location was where it all started. That's basically the birthplace of uh, Tatuay and Don Papin. Tatuay Brown Label, the selection de Cazador, was actually the first cigar that they ever made before they even made Don Papin Blue. Really? We make about 400,000 cigars a year in Miami, and uh, we can't really increase production, so I'm constantly shifting right. production based on demand. And. Uh, Nicaragua, there's two factories. One factory uh, was the original factory when they moved to Nicaragua in 2006 uh, to expand the business. And then, of course, they have the big My Father factory, which is uh, just beautiful. Uh, it's a pleasure just working with them. And they, they give me freedom, but I don't overstep my boundaries because it's, it's not my house, but they allow me to use it as my house. So from a blending, do you... Are, are you doing the blends? Or are you guys working together on your blends? Do they blend and bring them to you for you to evaluate? So early on, it was really more, um, with the original Tatawai Brown, it was really more conversation between Pepin and I. And then I picked his brain and he went and sat at the table and he put a cigar together. I go, that's it. He was trying to make me something. And then when I talked to him about his history and what he knew about Cuban cigars, he's like, oh, that's easy. Like, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And he sat down at the table and rolled a cigar and try that. And I go, holy shit, there it is. Now you're there, yeah. So do you, so a lot of it is your, is your flavor profile. Do you make a conscious effort to say, I'm gonna go with a mild or let's create something that's very strong or does everything kind of stay in the same lane? No, no, it's a, uh, I, I, I always like to say, and it's kind of been a slogan for the company for a while, but uh, there's a, a seat for every ass and a price point for every wallet. When I look at a brand name, I kind of get an idea of what I want to do with it. Um, or sometimes I'll have a cigar and I'll look for the brand name, but normally it's I've had all these old Cuban brands that I wanted to use. I'm like, oh, I know exactly what I want to do with this. Like the cigar I'm smoking right now, Atelier. I didn't have the brand name yet, but I liked the name Atelier because it was the workshop. Right. It's just a cool name. And when I started Atelier, it was about creating a workshop outside of Tatawai that could let us experiment a little bit more. Papin showed me a new wrapper called Sancti Spiritus that was grown in Ecuador. It was a seed that they brought over from Cuba and gave to Oliva Tobacco. Uh, to grow in Ecuador as a, an experimental crop. And I saw the wrapper and I looked at the color and I said, I know exactly what I want to do with this. And that's how Atelier was born. It was really based off of seeing that wrapper for the first time and going, that's a, I know exactly what I want to do. And it became like this medium minus, you know, strength cigar. It's not over the top, it's just got flavor. 
uh, good construction, beautiful to look at. Um, and it was just one of those styles that was because of that wrapper. So when I started Tata White, it was really like, okay, funky brand name, no one can pronounce it. It means tattoo, right? Who's gonna call a cigar tattoo? But it's an expression of me because that's the nickname that the Fuente family gave me was Tattoo Pete because of the tattoo of Opus X on my arm. Um, it's always been a part of me, but I wanted a cigar that was for me. And I didn't try to make an Opus X. I didn't try to make a Padron. I tried to make the best cigar for my palate. And I believe that other people can enjoy it just as much as I do. Pete, thank you. No, you're welcome. Appreciate it. Thank you. You bet. Let's drink some coffee and smoke cigars. <laughs>